because that was which was subliminal has come into the conscious mind, no longer manipulating, clear as bloody day. And that's what this information is doing to people in changing their reality from division to oneness. Free your mind. First thing, realizing you are a slave, Neo. Realizing what the situation is, which was the first part of this talk. This is the game that's being played around us and we are pawns in. Then saying, I choose freedom. I don't want that. I am me, I am free. And then you go through this process, which most people have been through, of transformation. Hey, what happens when the transformation happens? You go down little country lanes and there are birds twittering and there are little nymphs and butterflies and there's sweet music playing because I have broken through. I'm spiritual now and I, I have transformed so that I walk like this. What happens in the transformation? All sod in hell breaks loose in your life. That's what happened to me. A couple of years into this transformation of mine, I thought if this is spirituality, you could stick it, mate. This is no fun. But if you keep going and you keep doing what you believe to be right, and you keep doing what the, your intuition, your knowing tells you, then you come through it and you break through it and you transform your life. Yes, I've been there, mate. Morpheus, I have been there. About three times yesterday and once this morning. <laughs> know thyself. This is the key for me. It's the kind of thing, know thyself. It sounds kind of trite, but there's a difference between thinking and knowing. The computer thinks. The computer has emotions. They're electrochemical processes. That's why chemicals can affect emotions and emotions produce chemicals in the body. There is another level, consciousness, beyond the program, which does not think and does not what some American New Age people call emote. It just knows. It knows, intuitively knows. You see, when you access that level of infinite consciousness, infinite possibility, you access that level of infinite knowing. Infinite consciousness doesn't sit down and work things out. Oh, no, what do you think? It knows. It is all knowing. We are all knowing. Once we start to think and try to work things out, we are accepting that we are not all knowing. When we stop thinking, the first stage is think for yourself. Yes, that gets the old process moving, but it's only stage one. The next stage is know thyself. Know anything you want to know without thinking. You just know it. We call it intuitive knowing. I just kind of knew that. Why didn't I go with my knowing? Because thought was saying, can't be that easy. Go got a mortgage, you've got a cat, you can't follow your knowing and go here. No, mate, you've got to stick in the box. And knowing is the level where we accessing that level of us that is all knowing, all aware consciousness. And if we think that's not possible, that's just an expression of the fact we're still to an extent stuck in the box. Don't think you are, know you are. No, don't think. Don't stop trying to hit me and just hit me. We are in the process of trying to do something. What does that mean? We're always trying to do it. Don't try to do it, just do it. Don't think that it's as hard, and I'm talking to myself here, don't think I'm cross-legged on a mountain here. I'm talking to me bloody self. I, I, I give myself a lecture sometimes, you know, myself, you know, stop trying to make it happen, just do it. Because when we're trying to make it happen, we're in the process of trying, it's not actually happening. Don't ask the question, know the answer. That was one of the great lines um, that was given to me in the ayahuasca experience. Um, it's from the Matrix movie, there's a line in it where, he's, where, where, where I think it was the Trinity character said, it's the question that drives you mad. And this uh, voice in the ayahuasca state said to me, it's not the question that drives you mad. It is asking it. Know it. There are no questions to ask. We already know. And when we think we have to ask, we are all still perceiving division, 
and limitation when knowing knows all and we know all and we become the one, the oneness in awareness. Because we're all oneness, whether we perceive it or not, whether we think we're not, we're still oneness. It's not whether we're oneness or whether we're not, it's our perception of whether we're oneness or whether we are division. And we're at a point, a fork in the road, where we can waken and start living this world from that point of infinite consciousness and transform it because we are the world and the world is us, they're just mirrors of each other. Or we can go on the way we're going, close down computer-based reality, in which case we'll live in a global fascist state within not many years from now. My feeling is the transformation is the immovable uh, or the irresistible force and the Illuminati Orwellian state is not the immovable object because it's there because we're holding it there when we choose not to it will crash and it will all be over and we're starting to see this you know there have been times on this journey when all this stuff has been going on that, that my Optimism has, has waned sometimes and I thought, you know, I've never been more optimistic in this whole period that this is coming down. It's coming down because we're waking up. The hundredth monkey syndrome. The hundredth monkey syndrome is kicking in. People are spontaneously seeing it. Hey, I love Daffy Duck. I love Daffy Duck. Yeah. Big Brother, yeah. Big Brother is only Big Brother because we perceive him as a point of power. He is not. It's an illusion, an illusory power they're trying to sell to us. Martin Luther King said, darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. This is not a case of transformation of the world through stockpiling weapons and division and conflict and let's meet violence with violence because we'll just be caught in the same illusion. He said also, cowardice asked the question, is it safe? Expediency asked the question, is it politic? Vanity asked the question, is it popular? But conscience asked the question, is it right? And there comes a time when one must take a position that is neither safe, nor politic, nor popular, but one must take it because it is right. And you know, for me, for me, one thing would change this world in a flash. If we, as a, as a people, as a, a consciousness, started to do and make decisions based on what we believe to be right. Not believe that is right for us in the moment, in this superficial, oh, is it right for me? Oh, what about that job I might get if I speak out? And oh, what will they think of me? If we just do what we believe to be right on the basis of it, it is right, we'll transform the bloody world because most people are making decisions out of fear or desire for ambition that is on the basis of how do I do this that most suits me in the moment. When we go from it, what is right? Never mind what suits me, what is right, that would transform everything. As Gandhi said, you must be the change you want to see in the world because we are the world. It is a mirror of us. We change, it changes. And it, it, somebody uh, knocked this up for me, there was some kind of uh, artwork and uh, for a, a t-shirt or something it was just in the uh, kind of design stage but the, I, I put it up here for what it says if you are fighting the system then you are still caught in it this is not about fighting the system it's about ceasing to hold it together non-cooperation we cannot be imprisoned without our cooperation if we redraw that cooperation on an increasingly mass scale, oh right, uh, 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 Mr. Blair is just about to make a speech, uh, uh, a statement outside of Downing Street, okay, uh, cameras, okay, cue. We've just had a discussion, I don't mean to talk like that, but I don't care. We've just had a discussion and we've decided that this is what's going to happen. 
Now that only happens if the people say, well, he said it, it's the law, then it must be allowed to happen. Be if we say no, mate, it ain't friggin' happening, all right? Where's his power? He's got none. His power is in our acquiescence. Crack the eggshell, open the heart, cosmic love, connection, know who we are, outside of the matrix, in the world but not of it, and the cards, the house of cards will crumble because that which is holding them together will have been removed. And the Illuminati and all its imbalanced, sick, disturbed, uh, world that he wants to create will simply be dissolved because we will perceive it out of existence. Jimi Hendrix said, when the power of love overcomes the power, love of power, the world will know peace. And I would add this, only when we know who we are can we know freedom. Because how can we know freedom if we do not have the coordinates to understand how free we really can be? Not free of the next tax demand, not free of the next Blair Bush introduced law, not free of, but free in infinite, infinite reality, infinite awareness forever, because that's all that exists now and forever, everything. That's the freedom that we can be and we are outside of this illusion. And that's the freedom we can only know by understanding that's who we are. And uh, infinite love is the only truth, everything else is illusion. And we are at a wonderful time. Years and years ago, I came across this wonderful piece of music by uh, a lady. She came from Germany and then came to live on the Isle of Wight. And uh, she wrote great music, sang great music about all the stuff we're talking about. And one uh, part of one song said this. We are the power in everyone. We are the dance of the moon and the sun. We are the hope that will never hide. We are the turning of the tide. And we are. Thank you very much.